I'm going to run you through a series of former BSG presentations to point out to you some good things and bad things about the presentations. One of the challenges you're going to have, and you're going to hear me say this many times, is there's no cookie cutter approach, although I'm going to give you a lot of suggestions, because your company's story is different than other companies' stories. Uh, and so you're going to have to figure out from a content perspective, what is the right information? What are those three or four issues that drove your performance? And then uh, prepare to tell that story and then wrap up and do things very well with a forward looking uh, perspective at how you're going to take this company even greater heights in the future. So I'm going to show you several presentations. Um, and this one is... Uh, an example of a terrible presentation. This was perhaps one of the worst presentations I've seen. Um, this is a team that finished in last place, and sadly, uh, their presentation made it clear why they finished in last place, because they didn't learn very much. Uh, so I'll comment good and bad on uh, the various parts of the, uh, the slide, the slideshow. Nice, attractive opening. Um, slide. Nice mission statement, although you can see that perhaps that mission statement was part of the problem. What does it mean to be the pr premier provider of specialized athletic shoes in North America in selected other markets? Does that mean they were going to ignore the other markets? Does it mean that they were going to go with a differentiation strategy? That's what it would suggest, but you're going to find that isn't what they did. <clears throat> what they really did was a volume strategy. They tried to go out and grab market share uh, well ahead of everyone else. And this slide does a nice job of stating it. Notice it doesn't match their mission statement. <clears throat> and so this slide also tells you what they did. They went out and they built, built, built. This, where I have an issue with much of what you're going to see is what I this is what I call trying to put lipstick on a pig. They finished last. It wasn't a close last. They got stomped. They had their strategy. They stuck to their strategy after many years of it being obvious that it wasn't working. And so they just got clobbered. And yet they really don't acknowledge that up front. <clears throat> they don't have a lot of good news to tell them the story. This was going to be a difficult presentation for them regardless. But you can see they begin to try to hide how they really did. So they go and they talk about <clears throat> what were their unit sales. Here's some problems with this slide. You don't have any context. How does this compare to anybody else in the industry? They talk about market share. There were several teams uh, in this, um, companies in this particular industry, so they, they accumulated a huge market share advantage in those, particularly as you can see in those middle years. Bad news was they were getting clobbered financially while they were so doing. And they want to talk about their revenues. Again, they're always, all they're doing here is putting lipstick on the pig and, and delaying the inevitable, which is where they say, and we lost money and we were fools. So in my opinion, much better to get that right out up front. Notice how these BSG prepared slides look awful. Uh, I don't encourage you to use them. That scale on this slide uh, is worthless. What was their stock price? You can't tell. You can just see it's below investor expectations. Well, what does that matter? If you had a very competitive industry, nobody may have met investor expectations. So there's no context. You'll see in some of the following presentations where people do an excellent job of this. Again, a worthless BSG slide. Just to reinforce a point, why are they showing this slide? How's this different than the stock price? Usually isn't. Only a couple of slides is necessary. So now here we are, nine slides into a 19-slide presentation, and they're just now owning up to the fact that, they're, that their performance stunk. And so they have spent nine slides trying to color things a little bit, telling you how they did, when the bulk of this thing should be about why they did. And so now they show you that they finished in last. And it was a pretty distant last, as you can see. So now they talk about why they, they uh, finished as they did. So they said the problem was we overexpanded. Well, they say rapid expansion. Uh, the reality is they overexpanded. 
and they talk about how they ramp things up. What's the value of this slide? Is there any context? Uh, is 12 million shoes a lot or a little in the industry? People don't know because there's no industry standards, there's no number two, um, nothing to help you understand the, the data that you're seeing. The big thing was they, by doing this rapid expansion, they also had problems with their pricing because uh, they expanded so rapidly they had to have a big market share and when the prices got tight they weren't able to uh, <clears throat> they couldn't sell their shoes and the volume of shoes they needed to sell at a price point that was making them money but debt was a huge thing so this talks about their debt you can see and, I, and depending on uh, the industry you participated in this is a laughable amount of debt over 600 million and so they were paying upwards of 60 million dollars a year in interest. Notice that they don't talk about that anywhere. They just show you what their debt was. And they don't put it into context by cutting our debt this amount. Would that have restored them to profitability? So now they talk about how they resolved, they attempted to resolve their uh, debt crisis. And a lot of this is to say they made a series of bad decisions, frankly. Um, and they denied doing the thing, the one thing that made sense, which was shedding a bunch of that excess capacity, just cutting their losses and running. The road not taken. Uh, shouldn't have expanded so quickly and should have sold some capacity. But notice there's no facts to back this up whatsoever. What if they sold capacity? What would that have done for them? How much money would they have gotten? What would that have lowered their, their debt payments to? Would, were they really profitable without the debt payments? There's a ton of, of questions that they're not touching here. So now they tell you we're going to change our strategy and this is one of the things that made it a terrible presentation. Um, one of the many things frankly. They're talking about all the stuff they're going to do which would have been valid for the past four years so then the question becomes why didn't you recognize this sooner? You know, Private label is a volatile market. Yeah, no kidding. And so now, again, they try to get off the stage with this little positive thing that they have to state. And uh, my advice to you, if you don't have a lot of positives in your story, is you talk about, you want to choose your words carefully. You don't want to say things like, we failed, we are failures, anything like that. But I'm a believer in you have a hard time trying to put lipstick on a pig. So don't bother. Go in, call it like it is. And they could, have done a, they could have done a very credible job of pointing out the impact of all their mistakes, how much money it cost them, and by eliminating these mistakes, they were going to be profitable going forward. You don't get any sense of that. What you get a sense of is that they were clueless throughout the entire, comp throughout the entire simulation, and they've just now figured it out. Not a very good place to put yourself. So this is a bad one. I'm going to show you some others that will not be this bad.